From the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, this is Space Shuttle Columbia Launch Control. The countdown for launch of Space Shuttle Columbia on mission STS-78 is continuing on schedule this morning. The window for launch of Columbia opens at 10.49 a.m. Eastern Time and extends for two and a half hours. Situated in Columbia's payload bay is the Life and Microgravity Space Lab. LMS is housing about 43 various experiments involving life sciences and materials sciences. The LMS mission will seek answers to questions about our ability to sustain life for prolonged periods of time in space and about the subtle mechanisms involved in materials processing that are obscured by Earth's gravity. LMS will continue to expand the foundation of scientific research by studying the effects of microgravity on the physiology, development, and behavior of living systems. This is shuttle launch control at T minus three hours and holding. We are currently standing by to receive live television of the astronauts in the operations and checkout building uh, where their crew quarters are stationed uh, here at the Kennedy Space Center. The crew members are being assisted with their launch and entry suits by suit technicians from both the KSC and from the Johnson Space Center. Uh, this is a good view of our commander, uh, Tom Hendricks, who was on his fourth space flight. Uh, he served as pilot for both STS-44 and STS-55, and as commander of STS-70. Our pilot, Kevin Craigle, is on his second flight. Jean-Jacques Favier is a uh, member of the French Space Agency. Uh, he is one of our payload specialists or, and will be making his first trip into space today. Susan Helms is the uh, only female aboard the uh, uh, vehicle that will be flying today and she of course is a uh, uh, veteran flyer. She has flown uh, in 30 different types of aircraft uh, being named an astronaut. In 1990, she has already flown two missions, uh, STS-54 and STS-64. Mission specialist uh, one, uh, Richard Linehan, is on his first flight. And uh, another mission specialist, Charles Brady, again on his first flight as well, is uh, giving a thumbs up that he too is uh, ready and anxious to go. And the final member of our seven-person crew is Robert Brent Thirsk, representing the Canadian Space Agency. Uh, he is a uh, medical doctor. Uh, he was an alternate payload specialist for STS-41G. Um, and in 1993 and 94, he was the Canadian Space Agency's chief astronaut. This is shuttle launch control at T minus three hours and holding. And we are just about 14 seconds or so away from picking up our hold. This has been a standard two hour hold that uh, follows uh, tanking operations just to give the launch team any uh, extra time to make uh, final preparations before the crew arrives out at the pad. And we are at T minus three hours and counting. Everything continues to go on schedule for launch of Space Shuttle Columbia from pad 39B at the Kennedy Space Center. And here we have them. Our commander, Tom Hendricks, uh, mission specialist, Susan Helms, followed by pilot, Kevin Kriegel, Richard Linehan, Charles Brady, Jean-Jacques Favier, and Robert Brent Thirst. pictures of the Astro van and the crew uh, departing the van as they are now at the pad surface. Our NASA test director John Guidi has given approval for the crew to begin entry into the vehicle once they make their way up the elevator to the 195 foot level. And we have views of the crew as they are exiting the elevator on the 195 foot level. Uh, in the background of course is the swing arm that the crew will walk across the orbiter access arm that will g gain them entry into the 
crude module. As the crew is preparing to enter the orbiter, astronaut support personnel have mounted in the crew module a small camera that will allow us to see live pictures of the crew being seated in Columbia. Uh, this is the first time NASA TV has shown live pictures of this event. And to assist with the commentary of these new views, astronaut Marsha Ivins is joining us to describe the events as they occur. Welcome, Marsha. Thanks. Okay, the uh, astronaut support person, Jim Hulsell, is uh, assisting as Tom Hendricks comes in, uh, holding his head so it doesn't bump into anything. Tom's now standing on the MS-2 seat. He's holding onto a hand hold above the uh, forward window, and now he'll pull himself up after he gets himself unstuck here, pull himself up into the seat as they hold the parachute down. You can see the big bottles on the back of, the, uh, of his harness. Um, you need to get those centered exactly right on the parachute so that it's comfortable when you're sitting in there, head rests back down on the seat now. Now the suit tech, uh, Al Rochford, will start to adjust the straps on his harness so that he's uh, pulled down and comfortable in the seat. And then they'll start connecting the parachute and the shoulder harnesses to him. We ask the uh, crew to just lie there and, uh, and be a vegetable while we strap them in. You can see uh, Al's got Kevin's helmet, um, kick the uh, headrest back, and uh, Kevin will lift his head up. You can see the little calm pigtail hanging out of the back, and Al will fish his hand in there to get it. Go ahead, Jansen. We'd like to pick up 562 by the clock. Marsha, can you tell us what we're looking at at this point? We're in the mid-deck now, and uh, uh, Max Candler, who's the suit tech, and he is strapping in uh, Chuck Brady, who's sitting in the MS-3 seat, um, sitting in front of uh, Chuck, and uh, the rest of the guys on the mid-deck is the whole row of or wall of lockers that has all the stuff in it that were taken to space. Max has got uh, his parachute on, the uh, harness, and looks like he's got the seat belt on. Uh, and we have another view of the uh, flight deck with uh, the ground launch sequencer mainline computer program has been active and it is now processing all pertinent data. Copy that. Ops manager. Jim, the MMT is working. No issues. You're cleared to launch. Copy that. And Columbia, uh, you guys have a good mission and uh, we'll see you back here in about uh, a little over two weeks. And, uh, have, uh, have fun on your mission, Tom. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we got a crew here that's ready to go. Thanks to all the professionals here at the Cape. We're ready to work with uh, JSC during launch, and then the rest of the day we're ready to put our payload crew to work with the uh, folks at the Marshall Space Flight Center. And we're just about 10 seconds away from resuming Not the countdown for the launch of Space Shuttle Columbia today. Three, two, one. And we're at T minus nine minutes and counting, and the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. NASA test director John Guidi is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre-launch commands, as Columbia is less than nine minutes away from beginning a two and a half week mission of life and microgravity experiments, taking full scientific advantage of the effects of microgravity in space. Coming up next will be the orbiter access arm being retracted away from the vehicle. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle, and it can be returned to position within seconds if need be. And we see first motion of the OAA retract, which is beginning at this point. MS-2 OTC, channel 019, TV power switch on. MS-2, that's complete. T minus seven minutes and counting. 
and the gaseous oxygen vent hood is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. Inside this uh, tank is about 500,000 gallons of super cold liquid fuels that run the orbiter's three main engines. Flight crew, OTC, close the monkey visors and initiate O2 flow. Have a great flight and have more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Stay strong, Roberto, and we got the visors down to pseudo two on, and we are going to have a good one. Gillis, go for ET, LHC, pressure, base. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Columbia's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. We have a go for main engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we have liftoff of the Space Shuttle Columbia on an international life science and microgravity mission. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia. Houston, Columbia is in the roll program. Roger, roll, Columbia. Columbia completes the roll to place the shuttle in a head down, wings level position for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. 23 seconds into the flight. Columbia's three liquid fuel main engines will soon begin to throttle back in a three-step fashion to 67% of rated performance. That will dampen the stress on the shuttle's aero surfaces as it breaks through the sound barrier. One minute, 45 seconds into the flight. Columbia traveling at 2,400 miles per hour, more than 18 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 22 miles in altitude, all systems functioning normally. Booster officer here in mission control standing by for solid rocket booster shutdown and separation about five seconds from now. Booster officer confirms a normal solid rocket booster separation standing by for the performance call. Columbia Houston, we're you be getting a picture of engine start now. We're with you during engine start. It's a great shot. Roger, any narration you can provide, it'd be great. Okay, obviously I looked out the window uh, just uh, during the roll program there. And now we're in, uh, obviously, first stage. Pretty bumpy ride, and you can feel the uh, throttle down. Deck there, I glanced out the window to see the high series deck go by. Tom, it sure does show the rough rides of the solids. Yeah, as you well know, it's a pretty impressive ride on those boosters.
And the sky was dark, but we could still see the earth out the uh, side windows after SRB set and opening the visors. That's why we have tethers. Sure shows where the velocity vector. That was the only surprise, and here you see the transition to Miko. a few reflections of the forward RCS, RCS jets firing during ET7, and of course we did the 11 second uh, plus X after the uh, 7. We see you doing that now, Tom, and that's uh, a lot of people real happy to see that video. It sure does show you uh, coming back off your chairs after the 3G. Real nice. Well, we're happy the camera captured it. Chris, we want to thank uh, Les there, Marsha Ivins, and some of the other folks that spent a lot of time uh, making this available to try and uh, bring other folks into the cockpit with us. This is just a fantastic experience to share. Tom, we agree, and we really appreciated the in-cabin video during the strap-in as well. It lets folks see uh, what, you, what you did to get to space and what the ride looked like, and I'm sure those people are listening now uh, and happy to go along with you. And Houston, Columbia, you should see another one of Lockheed Martin's tanks in a stable uh, flight just after a step. Flight guidance. Good verify a good horizontal sit also. Thank you. Ten minutes. Personnel, cut down clock. Actually, we'll hold it. minus five minutes in one minute. Uh, GC. Go. Guidance. Go. Fido. Go. Prop. Go. GNC. Go. Max. Go. Eagle. Go. Ecom. Go. FAO. Go. Payloads. Go. EPS. We're go. Inco. Go. Booster. Go. Surgeon. Go. Thank you. And weather gave me a go. OBS and forecast at all three sites, KSC, Edwards, and Ben Guerrier. So, Fido, that's all that's required today, correct? Correct. Thank you. LRD. Thank you. LRDs go. And SRO. SRO is go. You have a range clear to launch. Copy SRO. Launch director entity. Your launch team is ready to proceed. Copy that. I'll let them pull in about 30. 15. 10. Yellows is go for a minute. Thank you. SRB people. Liftoff confirmed. Houston Columbia is in the roll program. Got a lap to be 104. Bodycom, good, fast cooling. Thank you. Team status as we press on to the checklist. Bodycom. Go ahead. Yes, sir. He has done fast and heat reconfig in the asset checklist. Thank you, sir. And you, let's see, prop flight? Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to make sure that the injector temps on your left jets that are on uh, FA-1. Okay. 
Okay, you can see uh, Rick and Chuck with the cameras, hard at work, and uh, Susan's sorting out some of the other things that are on the mid deck, and we've got uh, most of the crew out of their helmets, and the folks on the mid deck are really busy getting ready to take the suits off. Roger, we're uh, looking at it now. It's a good picture. And here you can see uh, Rick uh, adapting to zero G, but uh, Kevin had uh, failed to relatch the floor, so he gave Rick a task during his adaptation in the lab. On the left side of the picture in the red and white striped shirt is payload commander Susan Helms. And near the, uh, the tunnel uh, at the rear of the picture connecting the space lab to the uh, rest of the orbiter's crew cabin area, mission specialist Rick Linehan. The white shirt uh, adorns uh, Jean-Jacques Favier, the French payload specialist, with Canadian payload specialist Bob Thirsk in the foreground. Good morning, Tanya. Welcome aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia. This is STS-78. It's a live and microgravity science mission. I'm back in the uh, space lab module at the moment, and behind me you can see some of the crew members working on the experiments that we will be conducting today and over the next several days before we return July 7th. These are microgravity experiments. Can you explain what that means to all of us? Well, the mission is pretty much 50-50, what we call life science, and microgravity science is the other half. So life science is a study on the effects of the human body being exposed to this environment. And behind me, you can see uh, Dr. Bob Thirsk is uh, on one of the experiments, which is uh, what we term the leg wrestling machine. He is uh, testing his muscle strength, and helping him is Dr. Rick Linehan. And we also are conducting simultaneously uh, furnace uh, operations and bubble drop operations to see how materials operate uh, in microgravity. So it's both uh, material science and what we call human study science. Well, what is interesting to Dr. Watt is that astronauts tend to inadvertently develop a torso rotation motor strategy as well during the first couple of days of space flight. And we probably do this to try to minimize our symptoms of motion sickness. But in fact, we might be exacerbating the symptoms. For Dr. Watt's torso rotation experiment study on the Life and Microgravity Space Lab mission, we are going to be measuring our eye movements with special electrodes that we apply to our face. The special velocity rate center that we rigidly fixed to the top of our head And also, we'll be measuring our torso uh, movements as well with a special backpack accelerometer, which is fixed to our back. After the flight is over, Dr. Watt is going to compare our eye movements to our head movements and our head movements to our chest movements. And he'll be looking for any evidence that we might have adopted some torso rotation motor strategy during this flight. We'll be doing this experiment once early in the mission. We've already done it exactly towards the middle of the flight in a couple of days, and again towards the last uh, day or two of the space mission. If it turns out, in fact, that we have adopted torso rotation motor strategy during the flight, which might cause symptoms of motion sickness, then it will be relatively easy to train future astronauts to avoid this type of motor strategy or to pre-adapt them to uh, the atypical movement environment in a ground-based laboratory prior to flight.
overboard Columbia in STS-78, the Life Sciences and Microgravity Space Lab, or LMS for short. My name is Rick Linehan, and I am the MS-1 on the flight, and this is ALFI, short for Astronaut Lung Function Experiment. Now, ALFI is the brainchild of Drs. John West, Ann Elliott, and Kim Prisk from UCSD, University of California, San Diego, and it is designed to measure the physiological processes of gas exchange in the human lung on Earth and in space for free fall. Now, there are discrete differences which will occur in space, and uh, there are four payload crew members who are participating, as well as the orbiting crew members in ALFI experiments throughout the 17-day LMS flight. And what we hope to uh, ascertain from these experiments is how the gas flow rate in the lung changes due to microgravity or free fall in terms of how gas dissipates or, or uh, aligns itself in the lung. Now, when we learn things like this, we'll be able to predict uh, how the lung will function, obviously, in space, and uh, we can use that knowledge to determine how things should function on the ground. And with this information, we can also hope to understand various pathological uh, processes which occur in the human lungs, uh, different diseases uh, that we might be able to study when we have better controls. And additionally, we'll use this information for long-term stays in space on the space station and hopefully for long-duration space flight, uh, maybe one day to colonize the planets. All this information uh, will be put to use in one way or the other uh, for long-term space flight and stays on space. Now, this uh, rather debonair suit that I'm wearing is now called the Mark I mod of the RIP suit. And RIP, uh, basically, it's a respiratory plasmithography suit, which will measure our rib cage and abdomen contractions and expansions while we breathe. And this is measured over on our ALPI KDT here, and with that uh, signal that is routed to the ground, the PIs, Dr. Elliott, Dr. West, and Dr. Prisk, we're able to determine differences in how we expand our chest and how our muscles function in space when we breathe. It's a very, very important experiment and one of the uh, best experiments, I believe, to fly on the uh, SLS series flights. We're going to get a lot of good data from it, and I'm really excited to uh, uh, to be able to participate in this experiment. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Charles Brady from the Space Shuttle Columbia, Mission Specialist Number 3. I'm standing in front of today an experiment developed by Dr. Reggie Edgerton at the UCLA LA Laboratories. It involves measuring arm, wrist, and hand strength. It is well known that in space, over long durations of time, our muscles and our bodies grow weaker. It's felt, however, that the hand and wrist and arm muscles stay essentially the same. Here aboard Columbia, myself and my crewmates, are going to accurately measure exactly whether or not this is true. This device I have in my hand right here accurately measures our hand, wrist, and arm strength. It's plotted out on the graph here and given a, uh, a curve which we can a exactly duplicate over time. We measure this pre-flight and four times in flight and post-flight. Basically involves grabbing the hand grip dynamometer and squeezing in various levels of contraction, ranging from 10 to 100 percent. These are later plotted out on curves that we're asked to follow in graphs that spike, and we're asked to trace these. This will give Dr. Edgerton and his assistants all the data that they need to accurately measure whether or not the muscles in our wrists and arms continue to stay the same or grow weaker. Thanks for joining us aboard Space Shuttle Columbia today. And we'll be continuing with some uh, examples of muscle and ball experiments in the succeeding days. Thanks.
Roger. Can we get an early start on putting in the next cartridge? Stand by one, Susan. We'll check for you. Space Labs, Ralphie. Go, Rick. Luca, how's that uh, KU coverage uh, looking now? Would you like me to try and uh, start that verification on the rip? Uh, affirmative, Rick. You can proceed. To support the muscle physiology experiments, we're making use of a very sophisticated device called a torque velocity dynamometer, or a TVD. It's contributed to the mission by the European Space Agency. I sort of think of the torque velocity dynamometer as an arm wrestling or a, or a leg wrestling machine. Okay. This morning, as Jean-Jacques Fabier, my colleague, is working out here, he's using it in the leg wrestling mode. Sometimes the machine wins the wrestling match against us, and sometimes it lets us win. But who wins the wrestling match is not important. What is important is that the TVD can measure the torque or the force applied by the limb, and also the speed at which we contract our muscles and the position of the, the foot or the arm at any instant in time. And with this information, the scientists on the ground can understand how muscle performance is adapting to weightlessness. Now our primary goal on LMS is to quantify the effects of microgravity on the adult human body. But what happens to a developing organism in microgravity? Well, we're flying an experiment called STLB, which studies just that. Now STLB is a module filled with Madaka fish embryos, which are being uh, allowed to develop on orbit with us during the mission. And during that time, they're being closed circuit monitored by a microscope uh, television system and relayed to the ground so that the principal investigator, Dr. Kerry Phillips, from Bowdoin College and NASA Ames Research Center, uh, will be able to quantify the differences between our space embryos and those in the ground. He'll actually uh, look at the differences later on at the end of the mission, too, between fixed embryos that we have here and the controls in the ground to quantify how much change has occurred or has not occurred between the two. Now, initial results seem to indicate that our space embryos develop somewhat slower than those in the ground. Now, and NASA someday hopes to use this information uh, to better understand the normal embryological process uh, of development and also hopefully to uh, apply this knowledge later on to long duration space travel and colonization.
throughout the night. Uh, experiments have continued to work in the space lab module while the crew slept. Uh, included among those experiments uh, is the bubble drop and particle unit, which we're seeing some downlink video from right now. Uh, this is a fundamental science research into uh, theories of nucleation and boiling as a function of temperature and pressure. And the uh, long-term possibility of developing cooling mechanisms uh, for uh, electronic applications, possibly even for uh, spacecraft applications, uh, is the end result that's hoped for from these experiments. can see here in the foreground one of the plant growth chambers and floating above it from our perspective is payload commander Susan Helms documenting the plants via still photos. This particular container holds four of 20 seedlings, some of fir and some of the loblolly pine. Two of each four in each of these containers are bent. The other two are the controls in the experiment are left unbent samples of both the bent and the unbent pines will be cut on this flight day and another flight day after having been bent on flight day three those samples will be preserved and returned to earth for further study and we can now see payload specialist Jean-Jacques Favier floating near the front of the space lab module in front of the workbench where he is stowing equipment used to take cuttings from fir seedlings as part of the plant growth facility experiment. We can now see payload specialist Jean-Jacques Favier working within the plant growth facility glove bag. He has isolated a fixation bag and is now removing uh, one of the fir seedling samples harvested a few moments ago. Columbia, Houston, your mission, and we know you'll be glad to accept it, is to extend to 17 days on orbit. Congratulations. Good work on the IFM. Near the center of our screen, we can see Mission Specialist Chuck Brady participating in the Canal and Otolith Integration Study, or COIS. Chuck Brady is wearing some electronic light occlusion goggles, part of the hardware for the COIS investigation, and he is involved in voluntary head movement protocols in which he follows a target on the luminous target display, which we're viewing from the back near the foreground in this picture. Uh, on the other side, a series of light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, uh, are lighting up at various times, and Chuck Brady must follow the movement of these LEDs to complete these protocols.
Commander, and to all of your international crew aboard Columbia, and to our friends aboard Mir, uh, congratulations. Здравствуйте, командир, и great success of your mission. And as we begin as well to spread your cooperation, continue it in the Olympic Games to bring the world closer together. Uh, we're very proud, very proud, uh, that you have taken our Olympic torch. Uh, into space with you, now traveling some five and a half million miles. We're very, very proud to be included. Здравствуйте, командир. Здравствуйте, остальные члены экипажа. Мы очень горды тем, что у нас появилась такая возможность поговорить с вами и передать наш олимпийский факел уже теперь в космос. Это позволит нам сделать наш и без того не очень большой мир еще теснее, и мы все почувствуем себя членами одной и той же одного и того же общества. Uh, Mr. Payne, it's our honor to carry this torch, which represents all the efforts from the athletes worldwide to participate and compete in these international peaceful competitions. And now that you can see, just as we do in space, we compete in a peaceful environment for the benefit of all mankind, and that competition is to gain as much from each of our efforts just as these athletes that will participate in the games will beginning July 19th. Now, this was uh, taken this morning when uh, Dr. Brady was exercising, and we thought this was setting a new standard for ham radio operators. He's operating SARX simultaneously with getting his daily exercise, and uh, we thought this was above and beyond the call of duty. Happy birthday, Canada, from the Space Shuttle Columbia. Okay. Bon anniversaire, Canada, depuis la Navette Spatiale Columbia. From the STS-78 crew aboard Columbia, happy Independence Day, America.
to go? We ready to go home? Yeah. yeah. Oh, There's a the moon. That's pretty nifty. That's the other side. You got the camera there? Uh, let's see if I can get the moon. Just give it over my... and radar. Check them. Both channels look good. Okay. 4,000. We'll stop. Roger, Tom. Welcome Good back. Uh, we'll stop. And uh, congratulations on a great life science mission and a new shuttle record. And uh, one immediate delta on L1. Uh, uh, right out, temp to high, and stand by for further delta. Houston, Columbia. Runway inside. Roger, Tom. Runway inside. And the runway is now visible in the picture. Right. Time to touch down now, 34 seconds. Columbia descending at the rate of 165 feet per second. And we can see the nose coming up as the pre-flare is happening, uh, getting lined up for touchdown. Landing gear down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Pilot Kevin Kriegel has deployed the drag chute. Columbia now rolling out on runway 33.
Columbia now on the ground at runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center, bringing to an end a record-setting mission, 17 days of life and microgravity science. John, welcome back. Uh, we'll stop, and uh, congratulations on a great life science mission and a new shuttle record. And uh, one immediate delta on L1, we like right out temp to high and stand by for further deltas. Right out temp to high. And the payload crew that's given so much during the flight is ready to go to work here at KSC. Sir. Okay. Yeah, we're there now. Yeah, just go ahead and press with those. Okay, you can. We'll start with taking the secondary off and high load to enable. And just Tom, go for those now. That's a good read, Nisco. Tom, you have a go for that at this time. And look. GMC, did we get a gimbal check? Uh, I want to mention that FCS channel 3 on the rudder may fail, and we may deselect him later, but all of the channels are good, and we're go for this burn. Okay, fine. Columbia, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, I know you've been waiting for these words. Tom, we'll give you a go for the deorbit burn. Uh, be advised, we're seeing some intermittent problems on rudder channel 3, and we may deselect that guy selectively. Do that first? Yeah. Then I'll get you the ammonia step. Okay, you can do that. Max, any changes? No changes, flight. Prop? No delta. Okay, Eagle? None. Okay. Uh, DPS? None beyond what we already did. Wheel stop. GMC? Roger, Tom, no welcome deltas. back. Uh, wheel stop, and uh, congratulations on a great life science mission and a new shuttle record. And uh, one immediate delta on L1, we like right out temp to high and stand by for further deltas.